everyone, welcome back. We are gonna be doing a book haul today. It was my birthday this month, which means I was so kindly gifted with heaps of books, loads of different genres, some that I'd heard of, some that I hadn't, and I'm so excited to share those with you. So let's get straight into it. Also, finally got myself a book trolley. I'm so, I literally spent like a good portion of my birthday building my flat pack trolley. And I'm thrilled. I love her. So the first book is Giovanni's Room by James Baldwin. This is, I believe it's a classic. James Baldwin, I know, is known for how he comments on, on the human form and on the human existence and experience. Um, I know he is a phenomenal writer. So this book follows the story of David. Um, it's set in the 1950s in Paris. And David is waiting for his fiance to come back from Spain. And whilst he's waiting, he meets Giovanni, who is a handsome Italian barman. And they kind of have this three month, this isn't a spoiler, like it's literally on the back. After three months, David's fiance returns and he's like, I should just have this safe life as a married man with my fiance. Um, but it says that his decision eventually brings tragedy. I've read like three classics this year and absolutely loved every single one of them. So I'm excited for this one. The next book that we have is Everything You Ever Wanted by Louisa Sorma. I hope I'm saying that right. And before we get into what this is about, um, my friend Harry, who I have a podcast with, it's all linked on my channel. It's called Poster Boys Pod. He wrote a note in the front, which I like, I love. The note says, this book is about a depressed English woman, but it's also very good, so please don't take it personally. <laughs> this is one of those books um, where my, my friend Harry said that he read it and just continues to recommend it to so many people because it is so fantastic. So from reading the blurb, it seems to be about um, a girl who's kind of stuck in this cycle um, of going to work, going to meetings, getting drunk and waking up the next day and scrolling. Um, and then it says that she's introduced to a program called Life on Nyx that offers the chance to move to another planet and start a new meaningful way of life. But if you go, you can never come back. Sounds like it's blending a few genres. So I'm quite keen to see what this one is about. And also just love that this was one of my friends highly recommended books. Okay, so next are a couple of books that my partner got for me. So next up we have The Lost Bookshop by Evie Woods. So this one is about three characters who it says have been side characters in their own lives. But when a vanishing bookshop casts its spell, these three unsuspecting strangers will discover that their own stories are every bit as extraordinary as the ones found in the pages of their beloved books. By unlocking the secrets of the shelves, they find themselves transported to a world of wonder. So I'm I'm assuming this would be like magical fiction, magical realism. Um, it looks so wholesome. I mean, look at, look at this front cover. Are you joking? This, beautiful. I'm very excited for this one. I feel that I should read this whilst it's still winter. This feels like it will be a winter read. Next up, we have what looks like is going to be one of the most wholesome books I have ever read. Um, we have The Borrowed Life of Frederick Fife by Anna Johnston. This is about a man, Frederick Fife, who is an elderly man who is filled with kindness, an abundance of kindness. It says on the back, if he borrowed your car, he'd return it washed and polished with a full tank of petrol. Um, but the problem is, is this poor old man is lonely and he's broke and he's on the brink of becoming homeless. But then there's this case of like mistaken identity and he ends up in a nursing home with everyone thinking that he is someone else. But as far as he's concerned, he's got a roof over his head, a warm belly full of food 
and he's he's starting to feel like he's part of a family again. He starts to learn more about the man's past, who everyone thinks he is, which I think his name his name is Bernard. And it says on the back here that it is a hilarious and heart stirring story about forgiveness, redemption, and finding family. So this this just looks very cute, and I cannot wait to learn about Frederick Fife. This is a debut novel. Um, I think it's an Australian author as well. Yes, it's an Australian author. So I've been loving my Aussie fiction. So this is, uh, it's not, it's interesting because this is not something that I would necessarily have picked up myself, but I'm so intrigued by it. And I'm really glad that Lee picks this out for me. So before I get into the next ones, you need to know the little backstory in terms of how I received these gifts because it was so thoughtful and so creative and would have taken some time and I would like to acknowledge the hard work that went into it. So my friend gave me this huge gift bag full of books and each one was so beautifully wrapped with um, like a gift tag on it that she had written on which had the genre the Goodreads rating, and then like some bullet points to summarize what the book was about. And then on the other side, it was kind of like a reason why she'd chosen that book. I'm gonna share what she wrote on the tags um, before I show you the book. Honestly, it was just such a gorgeous, creative way to gift someone a book. So thank you, Izzy. It was truly a beautiful experience when I was opening them all and trying to guess what it was going to be. I'm very thankful for you. So this is what the gift tags sort of looked like. So we've got genre is mystery, Goodreads rating is 3.77. The tropes are we've got a neurodivergent representative, a single point of view, and it's a whodunit. And then on the back. She wrote, I listened to this audiobook recently and it had me super intrigued. An extraordinary girl who has an eye for detail. At her job, she uncovers a truth that challenges what she believed about her workplace. And the book was The Maid by Nita Prose. So Molly is a maid in a hotel at the Regency Grand Hotel and she comes across something pretty shocking while she's working and it's a mess that can't be cleaned up um so she molly kind of takes it on upon herself to find out the truth um and it says here that she discovers a power she never knew was there she's just a maid but what can she see that others overlook so this this sounds so unique um I'm so excited to delve into this. I love kind of mystery thriller books anyway. So this one looks excellent. Okay, next we have a romance with 4.07 on Goodreads. It is childhood lovers, soulmates, tragic love story set in a small town. So my friend wrote that this is one of my all time favorite books. Prepare your tissues because this book will mend and break your hearts all in one. Childhood sweethearts who experience tragedy and distance. This book has young love, heartbreak and tragedy all in one. It sounds like she's trying to ruin me with this one. <laughs> so the book is A Thousand Boy Kisses by Tilly Cole. From reading the blurb, it is about, as I said, childhood lovers, um, but then, they're, so their names are Rune and Poppy. Rune gets sent home to his native country, which is Norway. And then he comes back two years later and Poppy is ready to kind of continue their love story. Um, but Rune is not who she remembers him to be. Also, look at this. She got me some matching tabs. Are you joking? She is the cutest. What did I do to deserve such cute, lovely friends? So again, not my usual go-to. I, I said it in my last book video, I'm not usually a romance girly, I am trying to find kind of the romance authors that I can enjoy because I can't just spend my life reading the same genres and sometimes you need something that is a little bit lighter. Um, however, this sounds like it's gonna rip my heart and soul out and then mend it and then rip it out and stamp on it. 
Okay, the next one, we have another romance um, with a, is that 4.22 on Goodreads. Um, So it's a small town romance, friends to lovers, found family and healing. So this one, um, my friend said she adored it and she really hopes that I do as well. A woman moves to a small town and forms a deep bond with a reclusive man who has a dark past. So this one is called Archer's Voice and is by Mia Sheridan. And again, the matching tabs. This girl knows what is up. One of the top 100 romance novels of all time on Goodreads. So if I'm gonna get into romance, that's a good place to find some good romance, I would assume. It says here that Archer has a strange, silent and isolated world. He communicates with no one, yet he has whiskey colored eyes um, where something intangible happens between him and our main character. I didn't explain that well at all. So basically they're saying that there's more to him than meets the eye and that he's full of passion and full of hurt, but it's in his silence that we might find what we need to heal and to live. A gorgeous tale of survival and the healing power of love. So again, it sounds like a good romance with a bit of a twist. Sticking on the theme of romance, we have a 3.56 Goodreads rating. It's a romantic comedy, roommates to lovers, apparent spice. So this one centers around two unlikely roommates. Um, My friend said she hasn't read this one, so it'll be interesting to see um, my thoughts. Now, when I opened this, first of all, look at this. Look at this bookmark. Are you kidding? It's got two cute little wombats on it. I'm obsessed. I love her. Thank you. I feel like I'm reliving when I opened them all again. Okay, so the book is called The Roommate by Rosie Dannon. It says temptation is just across the hall. This sounds fun. This looks like, so I recently read um, a Lynn paint. I say recently, like, this year I read a Lynn Painter book and it was so easygoing and chill and I really enjoyed it. So this looks like it's gonna give me the same kind of vibes. So we have Claire who is an overachieving, well-mannered and utterly predictable girl and her childhood crush invites her to move cross country. The offer is too good to resist. Um, Unfortunately, it's also too good to be true. Oh. (laughs) Did I say her name was Claire? It doesn't say Claire, it says Clara. I'm so sorry, her name is Clara. So then, Clara finds herself sharing a house with a charming stranger called Josh. Josh might be a bit too perceptive, not to mention handsome, for comfort, but there's a good chance he and Clara could have survived sharing a summer sublet if she hadn't looked him up on the internet. Once she learns how Josh has made a name for himself, she realizes living with him might destroy the reputation she spent years building. But while they may not agree on much, both Josh and Clara believe women deserve better sex. What they decide to do about it will change both of their lives, and if they're lucky, they'll help everyone else get lucky too. So there's the apparent spice. I love that my friend said apparent spice. Spice is so hard to get right. I think it's so difficult to write spice well. I'm keen to see what this one's about. It sounds fun and again it's giving me like Lynn Painter vibes. I could be completely wrong. If you've read this and I'm completely wrong, I apologize. (laughs) Moving away from the romance, uh, we now have an Australian fiction book with a 3.8 Goodreads rating, um, lots of twists, multiple point of views and set in Australia. So, bless her heart, she said that she knows that I've been reading Aussie books and I like mysteries. Um, She'd listened to the audiobook for this and was on the edge of her seat. The book is Sally Hepworth's The Soulmate. I'm just gonna read the back for this one. Um, So before the woman went over the cliff, Pippa and Gabe were happy. They had the kind of marriage that everyone envies as well as two sweet young daughters, a supportive family and a picturesque cliffside home which would have been idyllic had the tall beachside cliffs not become so popular among those wishing to end their lives. 
Gabe has become somewhat of a local hero since they moved to the cliff house, talking seven people down from stepping off the edge. But when Gabe fails to save the eighth, a sordid web of secrets begins to unravel, pushing bonds of loyalty and love to the brink. What wouldn't you do for your soulmate? This sounds so interesting. I'm so intrigued by this. Um, I've, I've heard stories of, like real life stories of people that live near places where people, you know, attempt to end their life. And it'll be really interesting to see how that's written into this book. I found that Australian authors write so, so well. I, I don't think there's a single Australian book that I haven't enjoyed like thoroughly like just been so invested in it so um i'm really looking forward to seeing how how we go with this one okay so the final one from my friend is a we've got a fiction book with a goodreads rating of 3.7 it is contemporary literature tokyo cafe time travel you may be able to figure this one out i I was like, I know what this one's gonna be. My friend adored this book, even though it is outside of what she would normally read. It's a wholesome book which centers around a magical cafe where patrons reconcile regrets and lost connections by going back in time to fix it. It's made up of a series of short stories. And we are, of course, talking about Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshikazu Kawaguchi. I hope I said that right. This is one of those books that I have picked up and my partner, Lee, has picked up time and time again and I've just keep saying I need to read this I need to read this um I read a book recently that was playing around with time travel and I actually really enjoyed it more than I thought I would so now that I know I'm kind of interested in that kind of subgenre, I'm really excited to read this and look it looks like such a quick read I don't even think it's 213 pages so this will be a good one to tick off and um, get my reading challenge boosted up. Okay, so these last few, I have, I have to confess, I have to confess to you, um, were not, technically, were not gifted to me. Well, they were, but they were gifted to me by me. So <laughs> on my birthday, um, Lee and I went to the bookstore and just had a wonderful time just browsing, perusing, and I ended up, I think, getting like three or four books. Um, because if you can't buy yourself a gift on your birthday, then when can you? I say that like I don't buy myself books constantly. I'm gonna go through the ones that I chose for myself as a birthday gift to myself. The first one that I picked up is Powerless by Lauren Roberts. Oh, that's glary. Powerless by Lauren Roberts. Um, now I, this is a fantasy, right? We know it's a fantasy because there's a map. There's a map in the front. Um, now, my partner recently got into fantasy. Um, he started with June and then he read Atlas Six, and then he read Fourth Wing. And so he's like fully invested in fantasy novels. For me, I haven't taken the leap yet. And yet people love it. And I, so what? where I'm going with this is, I heard that this book is like a little, it's like a little gateway into the fantasy world. So I wanted something that was going to kind of introduce me to that genre. And this is the book that people recommended for that purpose. The next one that I chose is First Year by Christina Ross. So I read, you know, when you read the back of a book and you're like, it's just a bit of me. Like I'm gonna, I'm 99% I'm sure I'm gonna enjoy this book. So this is an Australian fiction book and it's about a girl who gets a place in a drama school in Melbourne. But she feels like she hasn't had enough life experience to to be a good actress. So she basically, it's about all of the things that she does to try and gain said life experience. Exploring, it says some of the darker pockets of her personality, blurring the line between the characters she must play in herself. Um, now those of you that know me know that my background is in drama and performance. It's what I did at uni, it's what I do for work. I just, I like to read about things that are in my world. So 
I'm very excited about this one. I'm, I'm kind of like, I want to read this now. So the next one that we have is another Australian fiction called Together We Fall Apart by Sophie Matheson. It's a debut novel about Claire. And for the past seven years, Claire has been living in London, works for a judge on child protection cases, and her partner, Miriam, is devoted to raising their young son, Rupert. Um, their days are dominated by nap times, laundry, and hiding from each other. Then Claire returns to Melbourne to visit her ailing father. So there's another family crisis. And then her brother Max's long-term drug addiction kind of is kicking in. So she turns her efforts towards helping him into rehab. But then this is at the expense of her family back in London. This sounds like a, a really interesting depiction of family life but also that everyone everyone's got things going on right um so i'm really excited to read this the typeface also is stunning i feel like i'm gonna fly through this so that is together we fall apart which brings me to the last book that i chose now this one is a book that has been everywhere it's it's been doing the rounds it's really popular i've watched other booktubers talking about it and they're like it's five stars it's outstanding i loved it i have to give it a go again it's not my usual genre but i have been swayed so the final book is the ministry of time by Callie bradley i'm so i'm so intrigued by this book also look at this stunning love this I love a pretty, I like a pretty spine. Um, so from what I've heard and seen, this is kind of a historical fantasy, time travel fiction, sci-fi fiction. I'm gonna read the blurb for this one because I don't wanna, I don't wanna talk about things I'm not 100% knowledgeable on because I'll just, I'll confuse you. So, in the near future, a disaffected civil servant is offered a lucrative job in a mystery new government ministry. Her role is to work as a bridge, living with, assisting and monitoring the expat known as 1847 Commander Graham Corps. As far as history is concerned, Commander... Is that Gore? Oh, what is wrong with me today? Commander Graham Gore. As far as history is concerned, Commander Gore died on Sir John Franklin's doomed expedition to the Arctic, so he's a little disorientated to find himself alive and surrounded by the outlandish concepts such as a washing machine, Spotify, and the collapse of the British Empire. During a long, sultry summer, he and his bridge moved from awkwardness to genuine friendship to something more. But as the true shape of the project that brought them together begins to emerge, Gore and the bridge are forced to confront their past choices and imagine futures. Can love triumph over the structures and histories that have shaped them? And how do you defy history when history is living in your house? So different to anything that I think I've read before. And I'm really, really keen to see how I go with this one because again, People have loved it and I want to love it. And <laughs> I want to be, I want to be in that club. So I'm very excited about this one. Um, I'll probably do like a, like a vlog or a, like a review or something with this one because, because it is so different to what I normally read and I'd be keen to share my thoughts with you and see what you think if you've read this one as well. So that is The Ministry of Time. And that is it. That is a roundup of all the books which I got for my birthday this year. I'm so excited because there's so many different genres in there that I'm just so keen to delve into. Um, so they have made it onto my onto the TBR trolley and I will of course be sharing uh, my views and my thoughts and my reading experiences with these books. So make sure you are subscribed if you're not already so that you can see how I go with some of these books. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to give it a like, give it a thumbs up um, and check out my other book videos. Find me over on TikTok at Sincerely underscore Stace and I will see you very, very soon for the next reading roundup. See ya!